Hey guys, what's going on? Yep, it's me. I'm still around. Sorry, it's been a long time since I've done a video, but I've been kind of exceptionally busy, both with work and life. I've been doing a lot of bass fishing. Been doing a lot of working and just enjoying stuff. Um, yeah, I'm sorry that I don't make the channel a bigger priority than I do, but hey, that's just kind of the way it goes. And anyway, it's been so long since I've done a collection video and I've had a lot of knives added. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do another collection video and I'm gonna do them a dozen at a time. So here's the first dozen. Uh, there's no real rhyme or, re rhyme or reason for how I picked them out. I just tried to pick out like uh, six higher end ones and six more budgety knives and throw them in here. Um, in no particular order, like none of them are newer or older or whatever, you know, I just grabbed them and threw them in here and these are the first 12 I'm going to do. And I'm going to just pick up each knife, show it to you, talk a little bit about it, a little bit about the blade steel and maybe a little bit why I got it, I don't know. And uh, we'll just go through them. Protein shake, I just got back from the gym. Anyway. So let's just start with this guy right here. This is the Spyderco, Spyderco Paramilitary 3 or Para 3. Uh, this one is an S45VN and it has uh, flytanium scales on it and a Lynch Northwest deep carry pocket clip. Um, because I, I'm not, I mean, G10's okay. I kind of like G10, but on um, knives like this that are a little bit fancier, a little bit nicer, I kind of like titanium. I'm kind of a titanium junkie, maybe just a little bit. Uh, CPM S45 VN steel, uh, really, really nice. I like it a lot. Um, it's supposed to be tougher than S30, uh, better edge retention than S35, but yet sharp and easier. I have no idea how they do that. <laughs> I'm not a steel magnate i don't know everything about it i do go kind of study them a little bit um from the steel maker charts and what have you but um i am in no means a professional i just know i like this a lot because it is easier to sharpen it's much easier to sharpen than s35 in my opinion um you can strop it right up and it gets ready to sharp and holds an edge for a good while uh it's got that compression lock so yeah nice action and although it's really big this way, it's not very big this way, so it kind of fits really nice in the pocket. Great little EDC knife. Um, I'm thinking about maybe getting a lightweight one of these days, but we'll see. Uh, the next one is the Demco AD 20.5. This is not one of the fancy ones. This is one of the uh, cheaper, I think I paid 140 bucks for this or 130, something like that. This is the one that I got from White Mountain Knives. These are Berkshire Forge Titanium Scales and Berkshire Forge Titanium Backspacer. Um, not the regular factory ones. Uh, the factory ones are really cheap and I don't like them, so that's why I put these on here. Uh, this is Os 10, which is okay. It's all right. It's not a super steel by any means, but uh, it's fine. It sharpens really easy. Uh, I really like this uh, shark lock, I think is what he calls it. And the funny part is about the shark lock is when you reach over the top to use this chimping, it doesn't really bother you. So that's kind of nice. It's got really fidgety friendly action. And the finger hole works. So stone wash blade. I believe there's some steel liners in there nested in that titanium. Yeah, you can see them right there. Pretty decent factory clip. Uh, I have not seen a rollover clip for these. Uh, it's not a very deep carry, but whatever. It's a little bit heavy when you put the titanium scales on it, but man, is it solid. It's a solid knife. I really like it. Next one is a Kaiser. And I got this one on sale on closeout. I don't know if it's still available. You could probably find it somewhere. This is the Kaiser Pelican, small. Yeah, that's supposed to be a small <laughs> or mini, 
I guess they call it. And I've never seen a bigger one. Um, now you can get these uh, Concept makes a Pelican. Same basic knife, same basic blade shape. Spear point blade. Really cool. Excellent action. I love the fact that you can choke up here and get your thumb up here. Thumb studs, really nice thumb studs that don't hurt your fingers and you can still get traction on. And really, really nice action. Titanium, somewhat deep carry pocket clip. There's only about a quarter inch or so left hanging out. Gear drive, backspacer. There is interior milling in there. I'm gonna have to get a flashlight there. You can kind of see it in there. Um, so it's not super heavy carry. S35VN steel. S35VN is the upgrade from S30. Uh, edge retention, in my opinion, is not a whole lot better than S30. Uh, and it is a little bit more difficult to sharpen, but supposedly it's tougher and doesn't chip as easy. Although I try to be careful and not chip my knives. So not really an issue. Uh, now on the budget side, I just got this one the other day and I think it's still on sale at Blade HQ for like $39. This is the Ferrum Forge Gent. I really like this. This thing is just such a super smooth flipper like most Ferrum Forges are. It's got your uh, alphabet suit steel, unfortunately, or for whatever. I mean, for the price, I guess it's all right. 9CR is not bad. Um, Liner lock, bearings, all that good stuff. Ground really thin. I believe this is made either by We or whatever, one of We's uh, under companies, Civivi maybe, I don't know. Cray G10, deep carry clip, flush, screws all in flush and everything. Hourglass standoffs, kind of a shadow box design. Great knife, great slicer. Really good action, very fidgety. And I just, I love their pivot. Their pivot's really cool. Uh, CJRB Pyrite. Um, the blade is great. The handle's great. The choil's great. The jimping's okay. It doesn't really do much. Button lock is really good. Sorry, that's me. Um, Fidgety, great fidgety knife. Uh, I do not like that kind of thumb stud, that volcano pointed thumb stud, at least not on this knife. For some reason, I guess it's just the way you have to dig in there because it's not further out. I'm gonna show you the same kind of stud on another knife. That actually works better, but it's the same shape. And But this one, after a while, starts hurting my thumb. That pointiness, it just, I don't know, because it's all you can really reach. If it was just a little bit further up, or maybe just a little bit further back, I don't know, it would be better. I want to get one of those uh, CJRBs with the, with the slot, with the finger slot. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But anyway, good knife, deep carry pocket clip, flush mounted screws, kind of, sort of. Uh, not a flush mounted clip, left or right carry, so anyway, and I think this is supposed to be the one in my 400 subscriber giveaway. If and when I ever get the 400 subscribers, I don't really push for subscribers and I probably don't put out enough content, but that's okay. Next one is the Wee Benter. What is up guys? That guy, Ben, is the designer of this, made by Wee. Yes, it's a user. Yes, I've used it a lot. I bought this knife when they very first came out. And within like days, they ran out of blue ones, so I had to settle for a black one. This is the S35VN steel model. Liner lock, made by Wii. Deep carry pocket clip. Nice and flush. Doesn't hang up on any screws or anything. Extra deep carry is actually past the end of the knife a little bit. So, really nice blade shape. Nothing real, just nothing really super exciting to talk about. It's just a really well designed, really nice knife. I like the thumb studs. I like the fidget factor. Just It's just a good knife. Nothing great, nothing fancy, just a really good knife. Well built. So that's that one. Uh, next one down here. 
CRKT. This is, I think, my only CRKT. And this is the Ken Onion Design Slacker. And it's in one of their alphabet soup steels. I don't even know. K350 KXP. <laughs> um, it's, it's lead on a blade shape, basically. It doesn't hold an edge very well. Sharpens up really easy. You know, it's kind of that um, OS 8, maybe, probably not even as good as OS 8 steels. Uh, if this was wasn't one four one the 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 one fifty four cm this would be an excellent knife. This would be incredible. Aluminum handles, aluminum backspacer, and then of course the whole thing with the quick disassembly and reassembly, which actually works really well. Um, everything else about this knife is excellent. The flipping action is really good. The traction on here is just right. Um, the machining is actually pretty nicely done. I don't know why they seem to like to fall short of steel. I love the placement on the jimping. It's right where your thumb goes. It's not way back here. It's not way up there. It's perfect. So anyway, but I still love carrying it. I love that micro deep carry pocket clip. Even though it's got the button screws that stick up a little bit, it still works pretty good. It's really nice. Just don't know why they didn't put excellent, better steel. Doesn't even have to be excellent steel, but just better than whatever that is. Uh, back to the high end. This is the Matsy knife. And this is made by Best Tech. Um, I just got this one not too long ago. Uh, there you go, Matsy. Uh, it's Although I can't find it anywhere on the blade, it's M390, supposedly. It's got a very interesting lock engagement. If you look how that lock bar is inside there, it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of different. It has excellent action. And it has a very unique flipper. That's the flipper tab. You got a nice little landing spot right there. It is numbered. Um, so you can flip it as well. And it has got a bunch of internal milling inside there. Which again, I can't show very well, but I'll do a disassembly on this knife because it is kind of interesting. So deep carry, well, not real deep carry. I guess there's about a three eighths of an inch sticking up. Uh, large size pocket clip and see this knife it also has the same studs like the pyrite but because it's got such open access I can get it on the side of it so it doesn't hurt your thumb and you're not riding right on top of that point so excellent excellent this one right here is a lion steel and this is in Schleipner steel which they do really really nice and this is a total one-piece titanium body. It's on bearings, steel lock insert, really nice. And in my opinion, one of the best flipper tabs on the market. Nothing on there to hurt your finger, nice and smooth and rounded. And the angle of it, you light switch it and it will flip every single time. And I like light switching knives. That's kind of my preferred style for a flipper is a light switch. The blade's really, really thick. That's like an 18 degree angle on there. So you can see how wide that is, that secondary bevel. But man, Schleipner, I know uh, Lion Steel gets a lot of flack for their M390 and stuff because they say they don't, you know, harden it hard enough. But uh, the Schleipner, it's really good. I like their Schleipner steel. So if you want a Lion Steel, or MKM, or any of those Italian knives, uh, go for the Schleipner. I like it. I like all that milling and the titanium. It's really cool. So, yeah, great knife. Oh, and then it's got this little gimmicky thing. This is called a rotal block. You turn it like that, and it locks your lock bar in place to give you fixed blade strength, although I never use it, so... <laughs> I'm actually surprised it still turns. I've had this knife for a long time. It's one of the oldest knives in my collection. 
So I got it when they very first came out. This is the 22 size. 21, I believe, is bigger, if I got that right. Um, this one here, this is the Quiet Carry Drift. This is a completely 100% rust-proof knife. Titanium doesn't rust. Vanek steel doesn't rust. LC200N parts don't rust. So, pretty cool. Pretty nice. Uh, centering on it is always kind of dodgy with this knife. It's never actually perfect, perfect. Let's see. Um, I can't seem, even though I've Loctited it a bunch of times, it always seems to work loose. So, and I'm not going to use red on there. I just use, uh, I don't even use Loctite. I'm probably going to have to get some Loctite on a stick. I haven't tried that, but I use this Vibratite, and this stuff just kind of stays loose. It doesn't like get really hard. So, but very expensive knife, I think for the size, but man, it's just a really nice little EDC, real comfortable in the hands. And uh, it took me a while to, it kind of grew on me a little bit. I didn't really love it at first because it wouldn't stay centered and I couldn't seem to get it to hold a really good edge on the steel, but now it's doing really good. After a few sharpenings, um, it's really nice. And then, like I said, it kind of broke in now it centers better, but just doesn't want to stay. So, but I'll see if I can fix that. Uh, next up, this is the CJRB Ruffian. Uh, another budget knife. I think you can get these for like 40 bucks on Amazon, cheaper than the Pyrite. And in my opinion, it's actually a better knife than the Pyrite. Just my opinion. I think you get more um, flair. Uh, the design is something different to look at. It's not just your ordinary, like, this to me. You can look at this and look at the bug out and... They're same, same. I mean, drop point, blah, blah, blah. It's a good knife, don't, don't get me wrong, but sometimes I like something that looks a little different, and this looks different. And this is um, a Dirk Pinkerton design. I love saying that. If I, Like I said before, if I was a knife designer and I could change my name and have any name I wanted, I would want it to be Dirk Pinkerton. <laughs> Dirk Pinkerton, I love it. It sounds like a knife designer. It's got really cool kind of different jimping that goes all the way up, which is nice. It's ground, it's super thin. It's that RPM 9 steel, which is seems to be pretty nice. Liner lock, only one deployment method. Deep carry pocket clip that can go on all four corners. Cool looking little pivot ring, purple G10. I mean, nested liners. Great, a lot of stuff that this knife doesn't have, this knife does have, and yet this knife is cheaper. So what do you know about that? Hourglass standoffs. Finger flicker, you can finger flick it. If I was, had any skill, I could thumb flick it too. <laughs> I'm just a better finger flicker. So, great, awesome knife. I really like it. I like it a lot. I wish I carried it more. I should carry it more. It's one of those knives that, you know, you look at it, and, oh, I sure like that, and then you hardly ever pick it up and carry it for whatever reason. Can I have a drink of my protein shake? And now, for this one, the QSP Penguin. Also a great knife. Some studs are a little bit tall. They like to snag your pants, but they work really good. Nice, super easy access. They don't hurt your finger because you can get on the side of them and they're not totally volcanoed out. They're a little bit, but not terribly bad. Um, this one is on Teflon washers, but uh, I don't know, super smooth. Shred CF blue, steel liners, not skeletonized, but this knife was $36, I think. So, super bargain. DT blade, Orncliffe sheep's foot kind of thing. Has a pretty decent edge on it. Great ergonomics, because it's basically a stick. And like I said, great action. Really good knife. I like it a lot. Anyway, that's the first 12 of my collection. 
Um, I'll try to do the next 12 in the next day or two and put that video up. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, get your family together, get outside, enjoy the outdoors. Toad Sticker out.